September 13th, 1981. As freezing snow fell, tanks rolled down the streets of Poland. Martial law had been declared in reaction to the trade union, Solidarity, a workers' strike that had gotten out of control. At this pivotal moment, Poland was torn between its political ties to the Greater Soviet Union and a desire for liberation from that same system. It wasn't the first time unrest had threatened Soviet control in Europe. Forty years under the communist system had put internal economic strain on all Eastern Bloc countries, and many had seen uprisings. The East German Uprising in 1953, the Hungarian Revolution of 1956, the Prague Spring in 1968. Poland had seen uprisings in 1952 and 1960, and riots erupted in 1956 and in 1970. Dozens were killed, hundreds were injured, Nothing changed. 1970, in, in my city, I was a high school student. I was throwing stones at, at the police. I'm sorry, it's still a hard memory because I saw my friends killed. It would take extraordinary circumstances to create a revolution where so many previous attempts had failed. Solidarity could only be successful as this revolution if it happened at precisely the right moment with the perfect confluence of factors. Within the next decade, there would be a dramatic reaction from the Polish government to Solidarity's demand for political and social reforms, turning the movement into a revolution. By 1980, that perfect storm was gathering. In 1979, Pope John Paul II, formerly Polish Cardinal Karol Wojtyla, visited Poland. His visit attracted millions and was a subtle yet very powerful challenge to communist power. The church would provide a unifying identity for the Polish people. After a devastating round of layoffs, wage cuts, and rising prices, Poland's labor force could take no more. Workers from the Lenin shipyards in Gdansk began organizing illegally. On August 14th, outspoken electrician Lech Walesa organized the strike that would begin a national revolution, Solidarity. Lech Walesa said, we won't accept what government right now is giving to us. We will go and strike for everyone, for everybody in Poland. We don't want any more to deal with the communism. Everyone, all the delegations from each institution should come and join our solidarity strike. Poland's communist government was aware that ideologically, their ultimate responsibility was to the well-being of the worker. Realizing that there was little they could do, in September of 1980, they signed the Gdansk Agreement. Workers now had the right to form independent trade unions, and most importantly, they had the right to strike. In a few short months, 10 million Poles, 80% of the workforce, joined Solidarity's ranks, an almost inconceivable feat under a communist regime. The union had become a revolution. But as Solidarity grew into a revolution, Moscow had been keeping a very close eye on the situation in Poland and it did not like what it saw. February 1981. In reaction to Solidarity's rapid growth, the Soviets installed General Wojciech Jaruzelski as Prime Minister. More direct and drastic Soviet interference seemed imminent. Perhaps to save Poland, Jaruzelski made a bold decision. On December 13, 1981, he declared martial law. Obywatelki i obywatele. Wielki jest ciężar odpowiedzialności, jaka spada na mnie w tym dramatycznym momencie polskiej historii. Rada Państwa w zgodzie z postanowieniami Konstytucji wprowadziła dziś o północy stan wojenny na obszarze całego kraju. That night, 5,000 Solidarity members were arrested, including Lech Walesa. Government officials forcefully broke up strikes and banned all organizations. 
Soldiers and military vehicles patrolled the streets. Schools and universities were closed. The media and industry experienced a complete government takeover. And he was quite hated by the people, but the, the other side of the coin is that it's, it's possibly that he was a good patriot, because if he hadn't done that, the Soviets would have invaded. We don't know what would have happened. We only know what was happening. The revolution was hindered, but far from dead. The church continued to serve as a common uniting force and provided infrastructure for the movement. The Pope's global recognition ensured that stories of oppression under martial law reached the rest of the world. The Solidarity Movement might not have survived without this international support. 10 million of Poland's 36 million citizens are members of Solidarity. Taken together with their families, they account for the overwhelming majority of the Polish nation. By persecuting Solidarity, the Polish government wages war against its own people. Like the Pope, Reagan was also criticized for his support of Poland. Many were concerned that the sanctions would hurt the American economy more than they hurt the Soviets but the combination of such sanctions and international pressure kept the Solidarity Movement alive and reform began. Martial law was finally lifted on July 22, 1983, although significant government control, censorship, and food rationing remained. On October 5th of the same year, Lech Walesa was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his nonviolent leadership. This honor demonstrated international regard for the revolution and its leaders. Solidarity had succeeded in making a significant crack in the foundations of Eastern European communism. By the time Mikhail Gorbachev came to power in 1985, it was obvious that the Soviet Union would have to accept social and political reform. The survival of solidarity meant that citizens' rights were a fait accompli. Negotiations were the government's only option. From February 6th to April 4th, 1989, the roundtable talks were held in Warsaw between members of Solidarity and the Polish government. These discussions and the resulting reform would forever change the structure of Polish government and society. By the time it was once again legalized, on April 17, 1989, Solidarity had developed from a revolutionary labor union into a major political party its rise meant the end of communist rule in Poland. Poland's legislative body, the Selm, elected Solidarity Representative Tadeusz Madowiecki as Prime Minister, the first non-communist Prime Minister in Eastern Europe in 40 years. In 1990, Lech Walesa became the first ever Polish president to be elected by popular vote. The movement was ultimately successful in leading a revolution against communism because it was a result of a unique confluence of factors, the perfect storm. The continued presence of the Catholic Church provided unity, infrastructure, and a connection with the wider world. The economic strife and the formation of a labor union to fight on behalf of the workers gave the Polish people a sense of power and indirectly challenged the authoritative communist rule. The revolution was ironic as a workers' union challenged the control of a regime designed to champion the rights of the worker. It was also ironic that the government's reaction in imposing martial law actually ensured its own downfall by generating continued resistance and international involvement. The Cold War context encouraged countries like the United States to impose sanctions that would accelerate the erosion of the communist system. The Solidarity Revolution challenged the very foundation of the Soviet Union, leading the way for neighboring countries to demand their own reforms until the USSR ceased to exist in 1991. The movement also speaks to the power of an individual in changing the course of history. Its success stands as a tribute to the determination not only of Lech Walesa, but of the Polish people. Because of its crucial role in the fall of communism, the Solidarity Movement can be seen as a successful revolutionary paradigm capitalizing on courage and exceptional circumstances to bring about radical reform.